right, folks. I am Sigrid Wright. I am the CEO of the Community Environmental Council. You are joining the Community Environmental Council's webinar, Electrify Your Life, Top Ways to Ditch Fossil Fuels. This is part of the Community Environmental Council's series, Breaking Up with Fossil Fuels, and part of a full calendar of webinars we will be doing this year. Um, Really glad to have such a well attended um, session this lunch hour. Particularly, I'm excited about this topic. Um, one of the frequent requests we get at CEC is for guidance on how folks can make a, um, adjustments to their own life and their own um, and their own homes. Looking forward to this conversation. We have a great panel. Um, we will be. Joined today by Michael Chiakos, the Community Environmental Council Director of Climate Policy. We will also be joined by April Price from the County of Santa Barbara and Emily Gottlieb from EcoAct, which is based in Santa Cruz. They are the experts in the field here and they will be answering your questions um, after the presentation. So this virtual session is taking place in what's known as California, home to nearly 200 tribal nations. And we acknowledge and honor the original inhabitants of our many regions. CEC is coming to you from Chumash lands. And we, I would love for you to join me in acknowledging um, the land that we are on in the chat, if you could, if you feel like that. Before we get started, just a little bit of quick housekeeping. This webinar is being recorded. You will receive a link to the recording and other resources after the event. This is an active session. We are encouraging your participation. Um, we invite you to add your questions in the Q&A, uh, to the Q&A during the presentations, and we will answer them as we are able during the webinar and during the Q&A session. So if you could take a moment to Look down at your Zoom screen and find the Q&A box. All right. Um, and if someone else has a similar question to you, you can always upvote that question by clicking a little thumbs up next to it. You can also use the chat for any other comments, concerns, appreciations, thoughts, um, or resources that you want to share. And keep an eye on that as well. We'll be dropping some things in the chat. We have a full support team here with us today, including Nicole and Jillian, who are running the technical side of things, and Katie and Jeannie Marie, who you will see as, pa um, as panelists, and Kirsten, excuse me, Kristen, who is monitoring the chat and the Q&A as an attendee. So you'll see a few of us with our screens um, turned off. All right, so. For those of you who are new to CEC or have not yet heard what we've been up to recently, I am going to share a video in a moment that actor Jeff Bridges recently did for us. And as we get that queued up, I'm gonna take a minute to ask a few questions of you um, to hear a, a bit more about how you already take place in climate action. And the reason we're asking these questions is you, what um, your guidance helps inform what we present in our our programming for you throughout the year. So we've got a quick poll. I think it's just got four questions. And again, it's helping us understand where you are at and that helps inform um, our programming. So Joanne, if we could please bring up the poll. The poll is anonymous and we use it only to better understand our audience's needs and interests. So it is anonymous. So please answer, uh, not aspirationally, but honestly. First question, did you participate in climate change advocacy? Uh, do you participate in climate change advocacy? And I would say, is that often, sometimes never, or you're not sure? That would mean things like writing your email representatives, testifying, marching, protesting, et cetera. Second question, do you own or lease an electric vehicle? That's what EV stands for. Do you own or lease an electric vehicle? Yes, no, no, but I'm planning to, or some other response. Third question, do you take the climate into account when buying groceries and or dining out? Often, sometimes, never. And it sounds like we only have three questions. I lied. Three questions. Hopefully those are easy. 
give you a moment to complete that. Um, and then while we are calculating the, the responses there, I'm going to take a minute and share with you this video that I just mentioned um, that was generously uh, produced by or engaged with um, Jeff Bridges. Droughts, fires, mudslides, heat waves. These are signs of the climate chaos that threaten our homes, jobs, and very lives on the Central Coast. We are the Community Environmental Council, and we believe in a world where everyone is safe from climate chaos, no matter your zip code, your day job, or the color of your skin. For the past 50 years, we have fiercely protected the California Central Coast, pioneering real-life environmental solutions for people who live here. Today, climate chaos is increasing, putting every person in jeopardy. That's why the Community Environmental Council has a plan. With your help, we're turning our region into a bright spot of climate action, a living laboratory where artists, farmers, entrepreneurs, students, business leaders, all of us contribute wisdom and innovation where we build real solutions that stop climate change in its tracks. Solutions like training hundreds of community members how to create waves of climate action in their local networks like rapidly shifting our homes, cars, and buildings to run on 100% renewable energy, like mobilizing farmers and ranchers to pull carbon out of the air and back into the soil where it belongs. Solutions like these can start here and ripple out to other communities, propelling change at warp speed. We must do everything we can as fast as we can to reverse climate change, repair the damage it has already caused, and protect every single person right down to the very most vulnerable. To change everything, we need everyone. Are you in? Join us at CECSB.org to end climate chaos now. Thank you for indulging us with that. And congratulations to our communications team for putting that together, very high energy. Um, so let's take a look at the results of the poll and then I'm gonna move us into the, the programming. So this is super helpful, thank you. It sounds like many of you, well over half to two thirds, sometimes are often engaged in climate advocacy. Advocacy, that's great because you will, we will now program something for you um, later this year around climate advocacy. It sounds like, uh, almost equally split between people who have an electric vehicle, don't have one, and are thinking about one. So that's also helpful as we put together some programming later th in the year on how to um, identify and, and source an electric vehicle and, and find the rebates. And do you take climate into account when buying groceries and or dining out? In other words, making your eating choices. And it sounds like uh, about half do frequently and the other half um, sometimes or never also very helpful for us as we put together our programming throughout the year. So thank you for that. Appreciate it. All right, I'm going to move us into the main portion of the, um, the webinar today. And it is my pleasure to introduce to you um, CEC's Director of Climate Policy, Michael Chiakos, who will share his personal story of eliminating fossil fuels in his family's life and resources so that you can too. Michael has been an uh, excellent champion on this topic. Um, He's been with the Community Environmental Council since 2007. He was uh, first in charge of building out our clean transportation efforts and then directing our energy and transportation programs to reduce dependence on fossil fuels. Of the many uh, really important projects that he's worked on, um, he'll, he will tell us that he's most proud about his role in bringing community choice energy um, providers to the region and 100% renewable electricity as well as starting Electric Drive 805 and a collaborative that makes it easier to drive electric in our region. So Michael, with that, in your good hands. Thanks so much, Sigrid. Um, and thanks for everybody who came out for this webinar. Uh, today, I'll be sharing my personal story, um, but before I, I do, I wanted to set a little context of why this work is important, and then also about the amazing progress that we're making at the state level. And um, as you all know, one of the key ways to reverse climate change is to ditch fossil fuels. That's what we'll be talking about, um, sharing my own personal story. 
Uh, but I think it's important to think back about the progress that we've made. Um, so one of my first things joining CEC in 2007, I worked on um, our blueprint, which was one of the first carbon neutrality plans in the entire country. And we thought, here's all the strategies and options and, and ways that we can reduce fossil fuel use. And it seems like a very huge task to get to what we call our catchy slogan, fossil free by 33. So now we're over halfway through that uh, generation, that time period, and I, I'm really happy to report that we're making more progress than we thought we could. We're, our, our region is already at 100% renewable electricity or moving uh, towards that way by 2030 due to community choice, and we're getting there uh, to 100% renewables about 15 to 25 years ahead of where the state targets are, which are already very ambitious. So now we're going to use that renewable electricity to electrify uh, transportation and buildings. In California, there's already been 1.4 million electric vehicles sold. Last quarter, that was about 24% of new vehicles being sold were electric, which is amazing. Um, here on the Central Coast, we already have over 2,000 uh, electric vehicle charging stations. And um, we're now really working to get uh, natural gas out of buildings. And we're talking a lot about heat pumps and, and efficiency um, and all the different programs that can help you to get natural gas out of your home as well. Next. So I wanted to share my own personal story, how we've been working to uh, reduce our daily fossil fuel use about 95%. Um, and this has been uh, a journey that I've been on for, for uh, over a decade. Um, so this is my family. This is my wife, Sonia, and our little toddler, Kiana. And um, we're a family of three. We were lucky enough to purchase a small house, about 1,300 square feet in downtown Santa Barbara in late 2010. And here's our story. And uh, I wanted to mention that I also did a, a blog, as well as um, there'll be a lot of resources that, were sh that will be shared after um, this webinar. So definitely, this is just to give you a presentation and overview of all the things that we've done. The blog has a lot of information and links. I hope you'll check it out, bookmark it, and use it to help you with your own journey. Um, so the, some of the main things that we're doing are, are driving a lot less and flying less than most Americans. Uh, we, we downsized to one car. Um, we have an electric vehicle for that car, as well as replace our natural gas furnace with a heat pump, and we're powering it all by uh, solar. So that's kind of the takeaway. The main things that you can do are less driving, electric vehicle, and heat pumps. So we know that major appliances are very expensive. You may only buy a car or a furnace every 5, 10, 20 years. So the idea is to really phase these things in as they age and they naturally need replacement. And, and then you can also take advantage of tax credits. So it's really good that you're here thinking ahead of time how to plan these major appliance replacements. And I want to acknowledge that um, while some of these things can be done by renters, many are easier to do by uh, as homeowners. And I know this is very frustrating and in a place with such high housing costs. Um, but we have a, sp a specific slide on renters and the things renters can do in their complex to help a lot of people at once, as well as you can use this information for family, parents, friends to make positive changes. Um, and also, while I um, will outline many of the things that individuals can do to ditch fossil fuels and build the solutions that we want to see, I'm very aware that we primarily need systems change. And uh, you know, 5% of do-gooders doing the right thing isn't gonna solve the climate crisis. Um, if we wanna build and scale solutions, we really need to make it easier to do the right things. And I'm our director of climate policy. I'm a firm believer in policy and, and law changes to move society uh, towards climate solutions and, and other solutions. So ultimately the most important thing we can do is vote for politicians and the solutions that we wanna see as I'll discuss at the end of this talk. Next. So 50% of carbon emissions in California, as well as with many families, come from how much and what you drive. So I'll say that again, 50%. So that's equivalent to everything else that you do in your life. And CEC has been working for a long time to make our cities easier to get around without a car. So city planning, commenting on bike and master plans, bike and ped master plans, 
Um, and in our own personal uh, story, when Sonia and I moved in together, we got rid of one of our car. And um, we drive that car collectively only about 9,000 miles a year. And so the average American drives a car 14,000 miles. So together, we drive about one third as much as the average American driver. That's been a big way of, of cutting fossil fuel use out. We um, bike to work, uh, to meetings. Um, here you can see us biking to the beach with Kiana, um, to the playground, on dates. And this has also saved us not only a lot of carbon, but a lot of dollars because AAA estimates the annual cost of new car ownership at over $10,000. So this is big savings. Um, I admit once or twice a month, it can be inconvenient. Um, and as a, as a couple, it's really helped us with our communication in terms of communicating when we'll need the car, where we're going, the things that we're doing each week. And I must admit that my surfing can sometimes be the largest challenge if, if there's like last minute conditions and I want to go and, and, and Sony has the car. But um, we've been able to really make it work. I want to point out also that my dad and my stepmom um, are also one car household. They're, they're retired and they also have an electric vehicle. Um, and my dad gets around on his electric bike as well. Next. So that's the largest way to uh, impact way to get off of, off of fossil fuels is really to drive less and then drive clean. And it's an amazing feeling being part of the solution, having an electric vehicle, driving by gas stations and not supporting the oil companies. So electric cars get around 130 miles per gallon equivalent. They reduce greenhouse gas emissions um, 75 to 100 percent, and they have zero tailpipe emissions. So they're amazing technology that is <clears throat> increasingly accessible to almost everyone in our community. Um, you can also charge them up for around $2 per gallon equivalent. So much cheaper to fuel. In fact, Consumer Reports says that uh, EVs are about half the fueling and maintenance cost of gas cars. And for about six years, um, I had a plug-in hybrid, uh, and we just charged it with a regular 110 outlet in our driveway. That's a very easy way to get your feet wet with um, driving electric. But in 2018, we made the, the big leap and uh, purchased uh, this Tesla Model 3. At the time, it was the most functional and really the only electric vehicle that you could take road trips with. We even, this is us camping down a dirt road in Utah. We went on a 2,500 mile road trip over two weeks. And it was amazing that how quickly the electric technology had improved in, in just a, a less than a decade. And right now you can purchase a new uh, Tesla Model 3 after the incentives for around $35,000, which is actually less than the average price of a, a new vehicle. But the great news is that there's other very highly functional EVs such as the um, Chevy Bolt or Nissan Leaf, that after incentives, you can uh, purchase for under $20,000. And even there's many used vehicles, after incentives could be five or $10,000. So really becoming a lot more accessible. Um, I'll just mention very briefly the tax credits, but I would really point you towards CEC's EV 101 webinar and other resources that are linked on the blog, as well as the resources that we will send out after this, this webinar. Um, so there's a new federal $7,500 tax credit, as well as a $4,000 used uh, EV tax credit that you can take advantage of. And then um, there's also some enhanced rebates through the state, as well as if you are part of Central Coast Community Energy. And um, Emily will talk a little bit more about these in more detail later. Also want to note that uh, there's also some used uh, EV incentives, both um, from the utilities as well as from um, 3CE. So a lot of different um, opportunities to uh, stack rebates and save a lot of money on an electric vehicle. Next. So um, in the intro, I mentioned that our family has reduced our daily fossil fuel use by about 95%. This isn't true on an annual basis, unfortunately, because most of our remaining fossil fuel use comes from flying. And this has been a really hard place for us, um, along with other people, families that are adventurous and like to travel, or we, we also have family that are in um, Washington State and, and Hawaii. Um, and Flying is really the easiest way to use a huge amount of carbon all at once. Each flight is roughly uh, half the carbon per passenger as it would take to drive to that destination. And um, this is uh, 
comparable to, so like if you have a round trip flight from LA to New York, that's about two thirds of a ton of carbon. So flying my family of three to New York would be same as driving a gas car for five months just from the fossil fuel use. And it gets worse because due to radiative forcing, which um, is upper atmospheric effects, it may be two to three times additional impacts. The scientists aren't quite sure. And this is why there's this whole activist flight shaming movement that have popped up. You may have heard that Greta Thunberg sailed to, to America when she came here. And so some strategies that we've used that you can too is to really just fly less and visit places nearby. We often vacation in San Luis Obispo or neighboring counties or towns instead of flying somewhere further. Um, if you take an annual flight to a tropical place for a week, well, you could consider going uh, every two years rather than annually and staying twice as long. Uh, if you're lucky enough to fly first class, consider flying coach for uh, the environmental benefits. Some people um, use carbon offsets, um, but really the best solution is to figure out internally how we can have a, a satisfying life without excess resource co consumption. Because, you know, a thousand, a hundred years ago, no, no one flew. Um, next. So most homes locally use electricity and natural gas. And how do we get off natural gas in our buildings so that we can use the 100% renewable electricity? So the primary method is to replace natural gas furnaces and water heaters with highly efficient heat pumps. They're three to five times more efficient um, than your natural gas furnace. And you probably already, you already have one in your home. Your refrigerator is a heat pump. Uh, heat pumps use refrigerants to transfer heat from outside to inside or vice versa. And there's actually 18 million heat pumps installed in the US already. And most of them are actually in the South, which have a lot of newer all electric construction and, and where AC is a necessity. So 5% of California homes have heat pumps, whereas 46% in South Carolina and 42% have them in Alabama. So home and water heating is about 80 to 90% of the natural gas usage in most local homes. And the sto your stove and your dryer are much tinier fractions. So replacing these two large appliances is really where you're gonna make the biggest impact. And this is our heat pump. We replaced it a couple years ago. Uh, we had a 24 year old natural gas furnace that was on its last legs and it heats the home in the winter. We never had AC and it does AC as well in, in the summer. And if you're thinking about getting AC, you should definitely look at a heat pump rather than just adding AC. Um, they cost ten to twenty thousand dollars plus, um, but there are many incentives that April will talk about. And CC also now has a dedicated email and phone number to help with all your electrification questions, which we'll send out in the um, in the resources. Um, our a heat pump water heater is next on our list, and it's less expensive than the, the heating. So the um, $2,000 federal credit will go a lot further. Next. So having uh, solar and electric vehicles and heat pumps are all very complementary technologies because if you invest in them together, you'll result in a much faster payback. If you electrify your life, uh, you won't need to buy as much gasoline or natural gas. And instead you can purchase a larger and more cost-effective solar array. So back in 2013, we invested in a three kilowatt solar array um, and our electricity bill has been zeroed out in that time. It was only uh, $7,300 after incentives were pretty efficient. It paid for itself in six years, which means we can drive our EV and power our house for free for the next two decades. And that definitely beats paying maybe you know $50,000 for 25 years of gasoline. Um, two kilowatts of solar is, uh, which usually costs around five or six thousand dollars as part of a larger system, will power an efficient EV for twelve thousand miles per year. Uh, right now, the only incentive for for solar is a thirty percent tax credit. And um, in April thirteenth, California is going to change the rules on net metering. Um, we can talk more about this in the Q&A. People will probably have questions, but definitely if you're thinking of going solar, you should call your solar local solar company right now and see if you can get under that deadline. Another way if you um, can't add solar in your house is to choose 100% renewable rate through your utility. 
So battery storage is a question we get asked about a lot. Um, you can contact your lo local solar company to give you a quote for it. Um, it hasn't penciled out for us, so we haven't added it, but with NEM 3.0 after April, probably most people who are newly getting solar will also add storage in there. And this is gonna help um, provide more home batteries to help the grid so that we don't have as many uh, natural gas speaker plants needed. Um, batteries also give peace of mind for rural areas um, where there's a lot of power outages, but where we live downtown Santa Barbara, there, there aren't many power outages. In fact, there's been no um, public safety power shut offs in Santa Barbara County since 2019, although Ventura has had um, more. And people often ask, you know, well, what about if you need to charge your electric car? And you really only need to charge your car once or twice a week for four hours or so. So it's not really a big deal if there's a planned or even an unplanned outage. If you do get a battery, just make sure that it's programmed to help the grid. Um, don't use your battery just for backup power. This is a very unnecessary, expensive, as well as environmental cost to make the battery just for a rare power outage. You want to use it to, to help the grid. Next. Energy efficiency is, is a, the most important starting place in, in most parts of the country, but here with our moderate climate, it's actually not as much. Um, you know, in past years, our heating bill was only $300 for the whole year. So saving 10 or 20% on really good insulation wasn't as big of a deal um, compared to really cold or hot places. Um, but LED lighting and your fridge are often the appliances with the largest payback. You should definitely look at that. If you have an extra fridge in your garage, that only has some bottles of water in it or something, get rid of it. That's a, a big drain. Um, and uh, if you have limited funds, using that, that money towards an EV or heat pump is a, a lot bigger bang for your buck than insulation or windows. Um, although those will help with comfort. And if you have the funds to do it, it's worth doing it all. Um, there's some tax credits for uh, energy efficiency that April will talk about in more detail as well. Next. And so while renters don't have as much control over their energy consumption, um, they can still go car free or car light. They can fly less, they can purchase or lease an EV. Uh, and critically, they can also advocate for their landlord or workplaces to install EV chargers or do some of the energy efficiency and fuel switching that April will talk about. So there's uh, various programs. Um, if you live in affordable housing, the Solar on Multifamily Affordable Housing SOMA program could help you add solar to your whole complex. There's also programs through 3C REN and 3CE to um, add uh, energy efficiency and fuel and heat pumps. You could add EV charging to your whole complex. So imagine if you could help your whole condo or apartment complex um, with these upgrades, you could have a much higher positive climate impact uh, relative to just someone working on a single home. And uh, Kristen's putting in some of the links to some of these programs in case you're a renter and want to advocate at your property. So I'm almost getting to the end of my, uh, my discussion, but I did want to talk about dietary lifestyle consumption. So eating lower on the food chain and stopping food waste are major areas that we all could improve on and act on. Plant-based foods have 10 to 50 times smaller emissions than animal foods. And they're also much healthier for, for humans. So eating less meat and dairy, and particularly factory farmed beef, is the most important thing um, for the climate, biodiversity, and protecting natural ecosystems from deforestation, as well as um, animal rights and, and your health. Cows belch methane and have 10 times the climate impact of fish, chicken, or pork. And lamb and dairy are, are in between. Beef production is a major contributor to deforestation, and, uh, and the food to raise animals takes up a huge amount of land. So if, if us humans ate less meat, we could return this excess land to natural ecosystems, and it would become a carbon sink. So I'll get off the soapbox in our own lives. Uh, we, we still eat some meat, but we, we often cook vegan and vegetarian meals. Um, and we use that money savings to buy organic and pastured meats from local ranchers. They're ones who employ climate smart agriculture practices like rotational grazing to draw carbon back into the soil. And what we found is um, we just experiment and find the best plant-based recipes that we really like. And then we try to work those into our food rotation as much as possible. Um, another big thing is food waste. So 
40% of food is wasted in the United States. It's stunning. Think about that. All that land, water, fertilizer, other inputs go in to raise the food and then have it wasted and go to a landfill and make methane. So CEC was a really early leader in edible food recovery. Um, and now there's a California law that's mandating it, which is fantastic to hear. And it's something that we can all do in our, in our own life. Sonia um, has really taught me a lot about better food planning. What we do is we, when we go to the grocery store, we just buy um, enough for three to five dinners, plus uh, breakfasts and lunches. And we rarely waste food with that food planning. We also are big proponents of food, not lawns. We ripped out our front lawn and planted a big um, garden. And most of our trees are fruit trees. We grow 50 varieties of um, edible fruits, veggies, herbs, flowers. And I've calculated all up a savings of about $2,000 per year if we were to buy it all. Um, so really food and then just reducing consumption in general, the things that we have in our life, plastic, we can reuse, recycle items. Um, we recently had a baby, and it, it's it's amazing how much baby gear you need, but how many how much baby gear our friends could give us as well. Next, so finally, voting. You need to vote in every election for pro environment candidates from local to federal. Elections really have huge consequences, and and voting politicians into office that understand and take action on environmental issues is in the end the most important thing that we can do to ensure that future generations grow up in a zero carbon sustainable world. So whip out your phone, you can go to this link right now here and we'll update you when uh, we need your help to take policy actions. There's a climate action plans and all electric uh, construction codes are coming up very soon and we could use your help. Thank you so much. Uh, next, that was my story. Um, and now we're gonna provide um, all the community resources that can really help you to electrify your life. And it's my pleasure to um, introduce April Price. She's the energy portfolio manager at the County of Santa Barbara. Um, and one of her roles is a single family home energy savings program manager um, with the, with the Tri-County Regional Energy Network. This is also known as 3C REN. They're working to make home electrification and home energy efficiency accessible and affordable for all homeowners in the Tri-County area. April also has experience managing solar and energy assurance programs for residential and commercial municipal customers. Take it away, April. Thanks, Michael. That was really inspiring. Um, so yeah, as Michael mentioned, I'm going to really deep dive here into um, what you can do at your home to uh, get off fossil fuels. And I do work for the county, but as part of the county's work, we're part of the Tri-County Regional Energy Network, or 3CREN for short. Um, next slide, please. So just a quick intro to that organization. 3CREN is a collaboration between three neighboring counties to support energy efficiency in the region. And we do so by offering services for building professionals and households and we're really able to um, bring back ratepayer dollars and reinvest in our local economy to support that work. Next slide. We are able to offer those um, services through three different programs. And today I'm going to speak to our home energy savings program. Um, through this program, we offer incentives for building owners to update um, their energy performance in their homes or in multifamily properties. If you're a multifamily property owner, please follow up with me about um, opportunities. But today we're really gonna focus on what you can do as a homeowner um, and the incentives that you can access to make those updates. Next slide, please. So I think we've pretty covered this pretty well, but um, you know we're talking about um, ditching fossil fuels today. But as you ditch fossil fuels, as Michael highlighted, um, you're going to be making your home much more comfortable and you're going to be making it a, a safer place um, by, by getting that um, combustion out of your home. Next slide. So Michael invited, <clears throat> Michael invited me uh, today to um, speak about the program that I run. And I'm certainly happy to speak to the program that I run, but what is most exciting to me currently is the fact that 
there are a number of programs locally that stack up to really cut the cost of energy upgrades significantly. And so the name of the game here is really being an informed consumer. So I'd love to walk you through a number of local programs that work together to dramatically reduce the cost of these improvements that you might not have considered in the past. Um, I would like to stress that I only work on behalf of my program, but I'm just aware of these other programs, so I'd like to share the information with you. Um, and I'd also just like to mention that I'm only speaking to what is available currently or within the next few months, but um, this is a rapidly evolving landscape. Um, so um, just next slide, please. Um, diving into why you might actually want to pay attention to this. How much can you really save? Um, quite a bit. So you're looking to stack local incentives to access, you know, between six to $9,000 off of what could be a $12,000 heat pump project. I, I realize that that price is just an estimate, but um, you really are looking to, um, to dramatically reduce the, um, the cost of, of the investment. And for folks that are on discounted utility rates or who don't speak English as a primary language, it's likely that the incentives will cover the entire cost of the project, um, especially in Santa Barbara and Slow Counties. And I will get to some examples at the end. Next slide, please. So the program that I manage is a 3C REN single family program. And this program offers discounted rates on any type of project on your home that reduces uh, your energy usage. So we're talking heat pumps, we're talking insulation, um, we're talking old school energy efficiency. So anything that is done um, to reduce your energy usage can uh, be qualified for an incentive. We offer those incentives by enrolling uh, contractors, paying them for the energy savings, and then those savings can be passed on to you. Um, the exact incentives are, um, you know, they vary significantly, but I'll give you some examples at the end of our presentation. Next slide. In order to access these discounted rates from local contractors, you do need to have a single family home within the Tri-County region. And unfortunately, you can't have added solar within the previous 12 months, uh, simply because of the way that our energy savings are measured with this program. Next slide. You, all do, you also need to work with an enrolled contractor. Um, so on your screen is just a few examples of enrolled contractors that provide um, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning services in our region. You can check our website to make sure that you are working with an enrolled contractor and we continue to recruit um, local contractors to um, serve uh, more broadly in our region. Next slide. Um, in order to connect with a contractor, you can just call them directly and let them know that you're interested in our program, um, but you could also fill out the interest form here and we will do our best to connect you with a contractor that can serve your need. Uh, next slide. I'd also like to make sure that you're aware of another local program from Central Coast Community Energy or 3CE. This program is specifically um, designed to pay incentives for um, upgrading natural gas water heaters and um, furnaces to electric heat pumps. As Michael mentioned, they're highly efficient um, equipment. So the incentives are listed here, um, additional incentives for upgrading your electric panels, and these incentives can be stacked with what you can receive from my program. So it helps to really drive down the cost. Next slide. In order to qualify for Central Coast Community Energy's program, you do need to be a customer of Central Coast Community Energy. So looking at their service map on, on the right of your screen there, um, most of Santa Barbara County is um, customers of Central Coast Community Energy, except for the cities of Santa Barbara and Lompoc. And then up in Slow County, um, many cities have joined, so lots of population centers are served by Central Coast Community Energy. You will need to work with a contractor that is, is enrolled in their program, um, but uh, yeah, and they 
So just make sure that you work with a, a contractor enrolled in their program. Uh, another, um, another incentive that you should be aware of is the Tech Clean California incentive. Um, so there, this was a program that launched about a year ago and ran quickly out of incentives for most of their projects, but we are in the sweet spot. There is still money. If you are a SoCal gas customer, there is still money available to help your transition from um, a natural gas water heater to a heat pump water heater. So Michael, you're in luck. Um, this is locally most relevant for non-3CE customers because you'd be accessing this funding instead of their funding. I know it's kind of boring to keep track of it all, but I'll, I'll show you some graphs to make sure that you know what will add up for you in your city where you live. Okay, next slide, please. The uh, Tech Clean Incentive Program that I just mentioned is also relaunching some incentives for uh, HVAC heat pumps, so replacing your furnace. Uh, this information was on um, a webinar recently and they announced that uh, they would be launching $1,000 incentives within the next few months. So um, again, this would be in lieu of the 3CE program, um, but every little bit counts in, in bringing down the cost of this in, um, investment. Next slide. All right. So um, both the tech and the 3CE programs utilize the same network of contractors. And so it is just important that you do work with one that is um, enrolled in their program. Uh, all of their enrolled contractors are listed at the website shown here. Um, but this is also um, a chance for you to be an, an activist here and support your local contractor in enrolling in these programs so that they can pass these incentives not only onto you, but um, other folks in our community. Next slide, please. So beyond what's available locally, um, Michael mentioned the Energy Efficient Home Improvement Tax Credit, and this was part of the Inflation Reduction Act. So this federal tax credit uh, became available at the beginning of the year, and it's a chance for you to re receive up to 30% off of the cost of your energy efficient improvement. There are some limits there um, for a heat pump. We're looking at an upper limit of a $2,000 credit and other appliances have lower, um, lower limits. Uh, for instance, a $600 limit would be on the lower end. Next slide. So for instance, if you are thinking about replacing a water heater, um, you know, if it's at the end of its useful life, for instance, if you opt for a heat pump, you're eligible for a $2,000 tax credit. And if you opt for a highly efficient natural gas upgrade, then you'd be eligible for um, a $6,000 tax credit. Um, and I did just want to plug, there is an insulation uh, $1,200 tax credit um, available here as well, um, up to 30% of the cost of the project. There is a $3,200 um, limit to what you can take in one year, but really you, you're, you can get a lot done. Um, you know, if you're looking to get a heat pump and insulate your house at the same time, I know it's a big investment, but um, quite a bit of tax credit available if you have the appetite to access it. Next slide. So I know that I, I threw a lot of numbers at you, um, but I, I wanna stress here that these are all things that can stack together. Um, make sure you're working with someone that is able to <clears throat> access these incentives by being enrolled in, in the programs. And I gave this information, but it was not tax advice. <laughs> so please do consult your tax professional um, <clears throat> as you plan for these upgrades. Next slide. So I have very quickly four um, quick examples to walk through of how these incentives might actually stack for you. So if you are a 3CE Central Coast Community Energy customer, you know, in San Luis Obispo or Santa Barbara County, and you're replacing your furnace with a heat pump, you are very likely to be able to access on the left from the bottom up, the $2,000 tax credit, 3CE's $3,500 um, incentive, and then in the neighborhood of $3,000 to $3,500 um, from 3C Run's single family program. 
If you happen to be moving to the right side of the graph on a discounted utility rate, or if your household speaks not English as your primary language at home, then you are able to access much higher incentives that will very likely cover the entire cost of your project. Next slide, please. For customers who are looking to replace their furnace with a heat pump that are not in 3CE territory, so I'm mainly talking to folks in the city of Santa Barbara and Ventura, who I think are on this call, um, you're still able to access the tax credit on your left from the bottom, the tax credit coming soon, there'll be $1,000 from tech and then 3C run single family program. And on the right side of the graph, you'll see again, stacking um, those at just slightly higher levels um, in order to probably pay for the entire project. Next slide. Still talking about heat pumps, but if you wanna replace your natural gas um, water heater with a, a heat pump water heater, you're accessing the same programs. I'm just showing um, their difference here. So on the left, still the tax credit, three CEs electrify your home and the single family program. Um, on the HVAC um, slide, I estimated, you know, you might be investing $12,000. Um, I was less comfortable throwing out a number to, um, to plan against here. Um, heat pump water heaters have, um, heat pump water heaters have a way to go in terms of uh, rollout in our region. So this is a real chance for you to be a leader. Uh, next slide. And our final example here, if you are a so-called gas customer, not, but not a 3CE customer. So if you're in the city of Santa Barbara or in Ventura County, um, this is what you're looking at here. So tax credit, the tech remaining funds, and then the 3C run single family program. And again, if you happen to live in a disadvantaged community in Ventura County, for instance, and speak Spanish or another language as your dominant language at home, then you can access these higher um, incentives on the right. Okay, next slide. All right, thank you for your patience as I ran through all of those numbers. I encourage you to really advocate, your, advocate for yourself as you talk to contractors and explore these opportunities. If you're not quite ready to make those um, updates, then I um, wanted to let you know about another quick opportunity. We do have do-it-yourself home energy savings toolkits available in our local libraries across the Tri-County region. Um, so these are things that you can check out to measure and improve your home energy performance, whether or not you own or uh, rent your home. Next slide, please. And I'm going to leave you with just a few reference resources, um, definitely some links to the programs that I mentioned today. And um, there's a link to a webinar where you can hear from local residents who actually made the switch to heat pumps. I know that some of them are on this call today as well. Um, I think it's most helpful. You heard from Michael, you can hear from other folks as well. It's very inspiring. And there's a, a neat calculator from 3CE um, that helps you calculate the financial impact of switching to a heat pump. And finally, the switch is on has some great resources to help um, consider various electrification options. So next slide, that's, that's the end of my talk today. Um, thank you and I, I look forward to your questions at the end. Thank you so much for all those great resources, April. Um, now I'd like to introduce another community resource called Resilient Central Coast. And to do that, we're bringing on Emily Gottlieb. She's a program specialist at Ecology Action. And Emily engages Central Coast residents with household actions they can take to reduce carbon emissions and increase community resilience to climate change. And remember that you can add questions in the Q&A as Emily talks, and we'll um, answer them soon in our Q&A session. Take it away, Emily. Thanks so much, Michael. Glad to be here. Um, I would love to start off by just hearing from all of you in the audience. Um, if you could pop into the chat one action that you're already taking to ditch fossil fuels in your life. And you can just kind of scroll through the chat, get some inspiration from your fellow attendees here. Driving a hybrid.
ordering an EV, no single use plastic, love it, keep them coming. I'm gonna move on to the next slide in the interest of time. Um, so I just wanted to, yeah, to just say I'm, I'm very excited to be here. Um, I'm gonna be talking about ways that you can find even more information um, about action that you can take to ditch fossil fuels in your life through the Resilient Central Coast campaign. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of background about the campaign and then we'll take a preview of it. Um, next slide, please. Resilient Central Coast is an initiative led by Ecology Action in partnership with 24 public agencies and nonprofits in the Central Coast region. And we connect residents with climate solutions and very importantly with other community members who are interested in taking action together. Next slide. So this program is backed by an action platform and this platform hosts over 100 actions that you can take at home to reduce carbon emissions while saving money. And in that platform, you can also get access to um, resources, oftentimes local resources like programs um, and incentives such as the ones that April was highlighting um, in her talk um, that might help you to save even more money. So you can find your local action platform to start accessing this information by visiting um, www.resilientcentralcoast.org, or you can scan the QR code on your screen here, and then navigate down to join the campaign. Next slide, please. So I just wanted to give you a quick look at what the, um, the action platform is gonna look like once you're in there. Um, you'll see these different action categories. And these are a lot of the different action categories that Michael talked about. Um, his family had already sort of taken action in these different ways. Um, so for example, you can, if you're interested in sort of learning about ways that you can change your transportation habits, you can navigate over to the shift your ride category. Next slide, please. And here are just a few of the different transportation actions that you will see highlighted in the platform, including um, offsetting air travel, combining trips, buying or leasing an electric vehicle. And if you click on any one of these actions, um, then you'll be able to get some more information about why that action is important and how, can you, how you can start to take the first steps into that action. Next slide. So in the platform, you'll also be able to get an estimate of upfront costs and resource savings that, um, so you can decide whether this action's right for you and you can assess um, whether it's gonna fit with your family's needs. Next slide, please. So this is the section that I really wanna highlight for you. Beneath each of these actions in the platform, you will find resources. So a lot of these are local resources. There are some state resources that are included in here. Um, and this is proof so that this platform can serve as a one-stop shop um, for all of, um, all of the information on what's been shared here in this webinar. So for example here, if you're interested in purchasing an electric vehicle and you click on that action, you're gonna get information about local rebates and incentives and programs that are available to you. Um, such as the Central Coast Community Energy Incentives. Um, so if you go to the next slide, we'll, we'll take a look at those. Um, the, that you'll navigate, you'll be um, guided over to the Electrify Your Ride program um, from Central Coast Community Energy, where you can get all sorts of information about the rebates and incentives that are available through 3CE. Um, and then another great resource specifically related to purchasing an electric vehicle that I wanted to highlight for you um, is the EVs for Everyone or EVs para Todos program, which is run by Ecology Action. Next slide, please. And through the EVs for Everyone program, um, you can get connected to purchase guidance assistance and you can find, oh, sorry, we can skip this one because April already covered the, the three CE territory. Um, thank you. Um, so you can get connected to purchase guidance assistance and you can find up-to-date information about financial incentives for buying or leasing an electric vehicle um, through the EVs for Everyone um, program. Okay, so 
the, I just want to sort of frame this up for you. The Resilient Central Coast campaign being a six county effort, um, we've set some pretty big goals. So where are we going next? Next slide, please. Um, each city and county within the Central Coast that's participating in this program um, has set goals for household enrollment and tons of carbon dioxide um, reduced by Earth Day 2023. And so this is what we're aiming to do by, by this April. We would like to enroll 5,200 houses participating in this program, reducing carbon emissions, taking action at home. Um, uh, to draw down 2,600 tons of carbon dioxide. Um, and in order to do that, we need all of you participating. Next slide, please. So we are launching um, the Resilient Central Coast Campaign Teams program. Um, and through this program, um, you can sign up to become a team leader. Um, so you will gather a group of five to 10 friends, um, neighbors, coworkers. As a team leader, you would receive one-on-one -on -one training and support and resources to bring that group together and to commit to learning and taking action as a team. So one example of this that's just getting started in Santa Cruz um, is the Santa Cruz County Cycling Club. So this club hosts monthly rides with their members and starting this spring as they hang out after their ride and they sip espresso, they're gonna be working through different action categories from the platform. So they'll learn about transportation one month, they'll learn about reducing food waste another month, um, and they're gonna to commit to taking action before their next ride. So it sounds like a lot of fun. Um, and if you're interested in forming and leading your own team, um, I encourage you to reach out to me. I'll drop my email in the chat or scan this code and you can fill out a quick form um, to get some information, some more information. Also just to highlight this resource for you all, um, we are going to be hosting monthly community workshops. Um, our very first is tonight at 6 p.m. Um, I'll share the registration link with you all um, and hope you can join us. Um, so we'll be getting together um, and learning about the different, the different um, action topics tonight. We're going to be focusing on home energy. So hope you hope to see some of you there this evening. And next slide, please. So I would like to encourage you all to sign up for this platform right now. It takes about three minutes to sign up. You enter your email, you create a household name. Um, so you can scan the QR code again here to find your local platform page. Uh, once you've navigated over to your local platform page, you just click on join the challenge and you'll be prompted to, um, to create a login. And then you can start to choose actions right there in the platform. So maybe right now or right after this webinar, please check the platform out um, and kind of use this inspiration and motivation to start to commit to taking some action. And that's it for me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Emily. Um, now we're going to move to the Q&A. And I know a lot of um, people have already been sharing their questions in the Q&A box. And so I can go ahead and answer one of the first ones, and then maybe Emily and April, you can look at them and see if there's one that you want to answer there. Um, I'll answer Robert Else's uh, question about um, what programs are available for solar panels. And um, right now, there is the 30% federal tax credit um, for solar, and that is the main um, federal uh, opportunity for um, getting uh, a tax credit on, on solar. There's also a program through the state of California called the uh, Net Energy Metering. And so basically when you overproduce uh, solar production during the day, you can then use um, those credits at night. And so that's what's going to change uh, in mid-April is they're reducing the amount that you'll be credited um, for your solar, uh, for um, solar that you would draw at night. Um, so definitely, if you're interested in going solar, you, sh you should call solar company today and try to get them to quote it and see if you could um, get the process underway by that deadline. 
Um, April or Emily, did you see a question in there that you wanted to ask? Um, I think there might be some, uh, someone asked about, um, I'll just read the question. I'm confused about community choice energy um, for city of Santa Barbara residents. So um, there are several community choice energy providers regionally. Um, 3CE is uh, the one that serves the county of Santa Barbara and um, San Luis Obispo that I showed the map of. Uh, the city of Santa Barbara has their own community choice energy provider. So um, if you are in the city of Santa Barbara, then you wouldn't be eligible for 3CE's incentives. But 3C REN incentives are available across the tri-county region. So it doesn't matter what um, community choice provider you have. And Emily, were there any other questions in the chat that um, you wanted to answer? Um, I'm not sure to address me. Okay, um, Anne asks, can you recommend a local home energy auditor? April, is that something that um, 3C REN can help with? I don't have a, a quick, easy answer for you, um, but we're always looking to improve our services for um, energy auditing. So um, you can email me and I'll, I'll try to find a better answer for you. There are private companies that offer that service though. Um, so someone is asking about, uh, an anonymous attendee is asking about if any or all of the incentive programs are limited by household income. And yes, some of them are, and it's very complex, and you've seen there's a lot of different programs. So really, um, as you go through learning about the various programs, just make sure to read the fine print, like for the electric vehicle rebates, um, as well as the tax credits. If you have over, like, I think, $150,000 income or $300,000 if you're married, you may not be able to get certain rebates or tax credits. In addition, there's also enhanced uh, rebates for um, for uh, community members that are um, low to moderate income. So usually this is making up to 200 or 400 percent of the uh, poverty level. So as I mentioned, for a family of four, if if you make under one hundred and eleven thousand dollars, you can get some very large extra incentives, particularly on the electric vehicles. So definitely if you fit into the low to moderate income, it's really worth looking at some of the enhanced incentives, you'd be amazed at um, how much uh, additional funding there is for lower to moderate income folks. Emily and April, are there any other questions that? Um, I'll just I'll add to your answer. I'll add to your answer, Michael, that um, if you're, if the, um, attendee was asking about the higher end of, of the um, income requirements, um, 3C REN and 3CE incentives don't have um, kind of a cap at which you would no longer be eligible, but um, the incentives just go up if you, again, are on a discounted utility rate or um, meet some other criteria. Someone is asking, um, for, Leah is asking, any thoughts on the Kern County Compressed Air Energy Storage Facility Plan? So this is um, a future project um, that will provide Central Coast Community Energy um, uh, with um, energy storage. So, and it's not battery storage, it's using compressed air. Um, there are some compressed air storage facilities in other parts of the country, although none have been built recently. And we're really excited to see this new, more long duration storage to complement storing energy in, in lithium batteries. So um, I think there's a lot more to be understood and, and to be learned about this, this project, but it's really good that it's moving forward and that we hope that they'll be able to meet all their metrics, their costs, so that we can have a new uh, affordable source of long duration energy storage. And I think um, that's about all the time that we have for questions uh, today, but thank you so much um, for all of your questions.
And if you could share in the chat what you found most valuable from today's webinar and what actions you'll take. Um, we really apologize that if we weren't able to answer all of the questions um, right now, um, yeah, just please share in the chat uh, any actions or, or valuable items. This will help to shape future webinar content. Next. While you're answering, I'd love to share a round of appreciations. Thank you so much to today's speaker, April and Emily, and to their organizations, 3C Ren and Ecology Action, for being such supportive partners in CEC's work. Thank you also to our sponsors, the Santa Barbara Independent, Marburg Industries, Santa Barbara County Air Pollution Control District, and Brighton Solar. We're very grateful for your support. And also thanks to you, our audience, for showing up and taking important steps to protect our climate. CEC is one of only a handful of nonprofits in Santa Barbara County to hold the highest possible ratings on both Charity Navigator and GuideStar. So you can support CEC's critical work by visiting cecsb.org forward slash donate. Free events like this one are just one of the ways the Community Environmental Council works to advance rapid and equitable solutions to the climate crisis. Events like this are only made possible because of donations from individuals like you. You can visit the QR code on the screen or visit cecsb.org forward slash donate. As you consider your yearly investments, no matter the amount, we hope you'll consider a gift to our work. And we also hope you'll continue to show up, including coming to learn and share knowledge at our upcoming events. Here are some of them. The Climate of Hope Forum on February 23rd. A CEC webinar on prescribed herbivory. That means using goats and sheep to cut down on brush and fire risk and, and put carbon back in the soil. And I'm also excited to share, in case you haven't heard, that Santa Barbara Earth Day will be back at Alameda Park this year for the first time since 2019 for a weekend of inspired eco-action and education. This will be on April 29th and 30th. So look for a follow-up email in the, in the next few days with a recording of this webinar and other resources that were shared today. And in the meantime, here's our emails in case you want to reach out to any of us directly. Thank you all again for tuning in to our CEC webinar series as we focus on taking bold action, putting a stop to climate change, and reimagining how we live on our planet. We hope that today's webinar will inspire you to join us. If you haven't already, please join our newsletter and engage with us on your favorite social media channel. Have a wonderful afternoon, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.